Hello? Did it work? Uh, that's my video. No, I want to do that. There has no audio hooked up and way is needed. Oh, Michael. Hello. Hi. I'm just trying to, um, for the pull request, fix some typos that Frank recorded. Apparently, my type on the is already right now. I don't know if it's just me, but your audio is not great, Michael. Is, is it, is it um, noisy, or is it just quiet? Um, I think it's noisy. Okay, I'll stay on mute then. I mean, I can, well, I, it's just, I can tell you, tell what you're saying, but it sounds a little garbled, so I have to listen closely. Are you using your music? Uh, Uh, the show is unmuted. Well, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Well, the icon still says unmuted. Nice. <laughs> uh, no, my my good headphones are sadly uh, still in. Um, uh, still in a FedEx box, which was supposed to be delivered today, but they didn't. Ah. So, uh, well, when you're talking just now, you sounded much better. Okay. Well, I just clipped the microphone and up and up the uh, thing. But nice, I nice, I can't unmute now. Uh, right. So it says I'm unmuted. Yep. Yeah, so the button doesn't do anything. Now. <laughs> Lovely. That's really a nice. MVC problem. Okay, uh, so what I was sharing was the list of issues. Again, which sharing you, it. which you're not sharing right now. But I know I was sharing it. Now I yeah, think I'm yeah. sharing it. Yep, I see it. And uh, let's just give it another over oh, five minutes. In, all right. Here's everybody. Thomas is here. Ray is here. You're here. Sarah, we haven't heard from you before. Did you get your audio hooked up? Is it working? Can we hear you? Do you want a telephone? Hi, yes, I'm on the telephone. Okay, good. Just want to, you say I, my mute didn't done work, so it's always good to know that your mute is working or not. Uh, so we're going to just start going through these issues. Um, maybe get another number so. Any comments today from me? Quite a lively meeting yesterday for Chief. Um, sorry, you're a little bit garbled. I couldn't tell what your question was. Can you repeat? I just said it's a pretty. That was a pretty lively meeting, teat meeting yesterday. Uh huh. 
Uh, I'm just trying to remember whether there was some um, to do that came back out of that meeting for us. Um, uh, yes, there was a discussion. We should probably add an issue. Uh, the question was to what extent the security considerations section of the RATS architecture should talk about um, uh, how long things are valid for. In other words, how often should you reattest, right? And so just some considerations for people who want to use the RATS architecture to keep in mind. Um, we do already have text in the architecture document that says, you know, it's kind of a race condition, right? Because the evidence can change right after you send it or whatever. But I think in the security consideration section, we need to have a paragraph or something talking about uh, uh, just the notion that, that you may have to reattest periodically or how you deal with cases where something changes afterwards and just some, yeah. Does that make sense? Uh, this isn't specific to TEEP. Uh, TEEP and others. <clears throat> hey, Ned, Joni. Yeah, so I think we should just have a paragraph or something that's independent of TEEP, right? It's just a generic. Yeah, no, I'm not trying to just say yeah, yeah. that, you know, that TEEP needs to know, which is why we're doing it. And so that's why there. So, Ned, hi, Ned. Hi. Um, Hank. So much better than last week because I bought I have a I have a monitor as well as a laptop. Next, my next desktop will have space for three monitors. That's what I've decided. In 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 portrait mode, right? I don't know if you've any tried that. But anyway, um, Hank, I'm just looking for Hank. He's gonna jump. Yesterday he said he wasn't sure if he was going to make it or not, so we'll see. I just talked to him in the hallway. He said he's going to join. Okay, great. Okay. And it was like curious yes, to get the to audio. Where, where are you that you saw him in the hallway? Um, TCG. Oh, okay. And where's that meeting? In Miami. Okay. Well, I don't know where I am. Uh, okay, so he says he's on his way. Ned is on his way too, he says. <laughs> All right. I didn't know you guys were having a meeting in Miami. We could have changed this or something. I guess. Okay. So uh, I answered that issue. Um, I was trying to uh, deal with uh, this one, which was, I think, this is correct. I don't know if you want me to pull up the text. Um, I want you to pull up the text here. Uh, the, I think it's this last security policy here that yeah. should be appraisal policy. Agree. So if that's a small change, then I will just push it in. I think I've already done that. I yep. can't build. I just can't build it right now because you know I can't install. I don't know if Mark's doing it. Who does my desktop? Um. Okay, so uh, I'm going to close that. Do you want to pick another ticket to go to? Uh, I want to get to the um, composite device question, but I think we should handle some other low-hanging fruit before we open uh that. Are you looking for low-hanging fruit, or are you looking for important questions to discuss? Let's spend the next 10 minutes on low-hanging fruit, and and then let's go to the most important question. Also, because Hank is still joining and stuff. Yes, Hank. Sorry for being late. Um, yeah, so any other, just pick a, pick a ticket that's also low hanging so fruit and maybe we can go to it. Um, hard to tell what's low hanging fruit. I mean, uh, okay. 33, 34, 37, it's unclear which of those is the lowest hanging fruit or if they're all not low hanging fruit. All right, well, let's just take this, pick this one. 
Um, I think it's absolutely the case that noncompliance can be a result. If you don't pass the verifier's policy, it knows that you're insecure, then the attestation result is a failure. It may present back the reason for the failure, but it says you're out of compliance, you're insecure, don't trust this thing. Section 5.1, trying to figure out what the text is. That's so let's take an example, uh, let's say the attestation evidence is for, and I'm going to take a teeth case, right? You can pick your favorite non-teeth case, but um, I'm going to pick a teeth case and send the teeth case to your editor too. Um, let's say your evidence is testing the uh, different, different claim sets are for the ROM, layered evidence case, right? The ROM, the firmware, um, Opti, and a trusted application. And let's say that you have an old version of the firmware and the verifier knows that that firmware that there is a known vulnerability in it that is now public. And so you'd say, hey, the ROM is good, the Opti is good, the TA is good, but that trusted firmware is bad and nobody should trust this thing anymore because the vulnerability is public and anybody could be exploiting it at any time. And so that could come back in the attestation result that says good, bad, good, good. And so in a sense, that's a failure because it has one of the things in the chain that says this thing is insecure. Okay, so I think that the, the relevant point is the first paragraph that we only talk about the, the um, we only talk about the attestation if it's result if it's if it's, um, if it's a successful one yep um, hi this is Hank. um am I audible yes, yes. go ahead Hank. okay good um so I think that um, an attestation result is always a success if you retrieve um, possible um, attestation result content. So for example, uh, you know that the firmware on your device is compromised because of a new CVE or compromisable. Yep. And now you check that and the, the, the expected result is yes, you have compromisable firmware. That's a success. Um, I was treating the word success as being it passes the policy. So one oh. example that we've talked about before is where the uh, verifier just says, uh, yes, it's good. And so there's a claim that says, yes, it passed the verifier's policy. And their lying party doesn't j just simply trust the fact that it's signed by a verifier. Right? That's not the only way to do it, but that's one variation that we've discussed. In which case, well, the in which case either the verifier signs it or he says, I'm not going to sign this thing. Or I'm going to include this claim, or I'm not going to include this claim. Whatever it is, the wrong party is meant to use. Well, I hope that the uh, uh, very, I'll say. So, so what we have here is that the output of a relying party can be success or failure. The output of the verifier are just attestation results. But the I think the more interesting question is what is. <clears throat> what is an attestation result com comprised of or consist of? <clears throat> and I think the discussion was going down the path of that it could consist of uh, uh, compliance to an appraisal policy or non-compliance. <clears throat> and I don't know if there's so, so I think I think that we're level compliance. I think that we're 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 hung up on so you could ask the uh, verifier for a passport, right? The verifier may return you a passport, um, and it's a perfectly valid passport, and it, it tests to the fact that you're full of malware, right? Um, and that is, Hank is saying that is a successful operation with the verifier, right? Because it did all the right, it did all the right processing, and it returned a value, as opposed to it said 404, I'm not a verifier or something, right? Well, whatever. But right. case, specifically in the passport agency case in real life, is you get back to say passport denied. Right, but but that's a different case, right? Which we're no, trying to say is that but there you've successfully gotten a response back from the passport agency, and the passport agency says, "No, I'm not granting you a passport. You didn't fill out the form correctly. You, you don't I agree. Not, you're not a agree. U.S. citizen. I know I'm not willing to grant U.S. passports to non-U.S. citizens." R right, I agree with you. That is a, that is that is. So I'm trying to say that's like the 404 response from the verifier. But there's another case where they issue a passport, okay, and yeah. 
Um, when you go to present the passport to the relying party, border agent at other country, they say, I'm sorry, but you don't have a visa or, you know, we don't yeah. accept people from your country. Okay? Yeah, exactly. Okay. And, but it's a perfectly valid passport. Okay. And it was, it was obtained uh, successfully from the verifier. It's just not suitable for this relying party. And yeah, I, agree. I agree that that's a success case. Yeah. So, so yeah, so that's the, that's, that, that's the, not the case that uh, I had in mind for my description of failure. So uh, I agree with you. That's why I think we have to have two descriptions of failure here. Sure. That's a fair, uh, I, I disagree. I, sorry. I agree with you, Michael. Um, I'm looking at the sentence that, that you pasted in. That's the, if the attestation result was a successful one, the yeah. attestor can then present the attestation result to a relying party. And that applies to the case that you just described. Yes. Right. Still present it. Right. In, so what's in the, the success of the policy? Sorry, Matt, sorry. I was just going to say, in the passport model, is the is the is the, the 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 analogy of the passport is it expressed in what we would call an attestation result? Would we, would we call the passport document the attestation yes. result? Yes, that's correct. And and the uh, information in the passport is it describing? Um, do we, is it describing the the policies that were satisfied or something else? That depends on what the verifier wants to put in there. It could be anything, meaning uh, the architecture is agnostic as to what that goes in. That's up to the verifier whether it puts in things derived from evidence, whether it puts in things that it has created, like, by the way, this guy is a U.S. citizen, right, which has nothing to do with the evidence. That's a value judgment that was generated by the verifier or both could be combinations, and so it's agnostic as to what goes in the attestation result. All those are possible. So in the, <clears throat> the Frank's comment was, um, you know, we want to talk about it in, in the context of the term compliance or non-compliance, and my, the question I have is to what? The appraisal uh, so, uh, policy for evidence. Yeah, okay, so. <clears throat> so I think there are two levels here. And the two, the two levels are I give a passport to a uh, external uh, remote attestation service, which is a verifier, and I use the passport model because uh, this has to be standard format somehow to be. Uh, um, uh, understandable. And now, um, uh, terminology, uh, the thing that you present a passport to is their lying party. You present evidence to the uh, verifier in the, in the passport model. Okay. I, I, in the passport model, I present well-formed standardized evidence to a, uh, a external verifier. I'm very sorry to have mixed that up. Um, and now the uh, procedure is conducted and the procedure is not successful because the uh, verifier was not able to obtain all pieces necessary to uh, appraise the evidence. Then we have a failure here. And okay. then we can have uh, the content is successfully appraised and the result is no way you're not going anywhere here because you're full of uh, vulnerable malware. And that is a policy decision uh, that is nested inside the successful conducted appraisal procedure. Would that be correct? I don't know about the latter one, but I think that we're saying that there's actually three cases, and I just mm -hmm. some what I think Michael said a minute ago. Okay. Um, that the first one, so the, the analogy is, you know, I apply to the you know passport agency of your country of origin, or sorry, uh, of a particular country, right? And what was that? I'm refusing to grant you a, 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 a any credentials because I can't authenticate you. I can't get enough information. You're not a U.S. citizen or whatever. You just don't pass the policy for me to give you anything. Right? Um, uh, technically, there's four cases because there's a case where the verifier is not reachable, too. I'm putting that one aside. Okay. Uh, so you get to the verifier, and the verifier that says, work out for me. Sorry, you are not eligible for me to grant you anything. I don't know who you are. I don't trust you. Uh, I, I'm, I'm the wrong verifier for you to be talking. Right. But it is an informed decision. It has everything in place to make the decision. It's not a lack of information. It has no. information, no, not you. No, it could be lack of information. It could be that, I, that, that, that there's no endorsements, and so I, there's no way for me to tell. Uh, okay, so okay, you're combining these two scenarios. Okay, then I, I don't follow you. There's a, there's a second scenario that says, okay, I have all the evidence, but you happen to be uh, 
meaning I have all the inputs that I need and I can verify that you are out of date. And so I may be able to fill in some claims and things to tell you exactly how you're out of date. And so whether you call that a success or a failure is kind of what you're asking about, Hank. Is I don't know what you call it, but it's a separate case from the one that says, uh, sorry, I don't even have enough uh, information. I'm probably the wrong verifier for you to talk to and so on. And there's okay. a third case where everything is perfectly fine, and that one is clearly a success. And so I would call the first one a failure, the third one a success, and the middle one, I don't care what we call it, whether we call it a success or a failure. If we use the words compliance and noncompliance, then it's success with compliance, success with noncompliance, failure with, which assumes noncompliance. And uh, the other one is can can connect. I think that's a good suggestion, Ned. Sounds fine to me. I think tying this hey. to the policy and the procedure sounds fine with me also. Yeah. Hey, this is Gary. I have a question on the uh, on the displayed proposed text text proposal. Okay, so I, I always uh, different. Yeah. So I always differentiate in my mind uh, attestation results from attestation evidence. That attestation results can be uh, can be just uh, a yes no decision from the verifier. Yes, I received a valid token. No, I didn't. Uh, I uh, attestation evidence is what a relying party can use to compare against their policy, right? So I'm not sure that the, I'm not sure result is really the word we're looking for. Here, when we say the resulting result is examined by the relying party and based upon appraisal policy, the result may not be uh, particularly verbose. Um, so I disagree with one of the things that you said. I think it is a result. I think both cases that you're talking about are different things that can appear in an attestation result, but you use the term attestation evidence. The evidence never goes to the relying party. Everything in that goes to the relying party is by definition part of the attestation result. Claim sets in there. I would only use the word evidence as being the thing that goes to the verifier. It's just a terminology point. Okay. So that's a, so what you're saying is the result can be as verbose as uh, as the uh, verifier wants to make it then. And Correct. If it's just a bind, the it, 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 yeah, it could okay. just be the boo that says this thing is good. And here, so in that sense, it's either signed by the verifier or not signed by the verifier. It could include a bunch of claims. Or, or it could be both of those put together. Okay, thank you. This is saying just a minute, uh, not trying to red for you, Dave. You just said that evidence always only goes to the verifier and That's never to the, the term in the terminology section right yeah. now, and I'd like to keep it that way. That is okay, but but. So this excludes any way of relaying it via a relying party, yes? No, it just means that when you do that, you don't call it evidence. You call it, you know, it's still claim sets or something. It may be claims that it may be the same claims, but they're claims in the attestation result instead of claims in the evidence. It's purely terminology. It doesn't mean that you can't do it. It could even be exactly okay. the same format. So you could take the same eat, you could take the same eat and encapsulate it in a claim and stick it in the attestation result and you just wouldn't call it evidence. It'd still be the same bits though. Accepted. I'm with you. Okay. Uh, so, are there actual changes that any of you would like to make? I don't. Ned, your success. You, you proposed four possible failures. Is that right? Yeah, I think we're on the same page with that. So, if there's a section that's talking about what the potential results can be. Those would be the four states that are possible, unless there's something else we're missing. Uh, I think that we need to. I agree with Michael's text, and maybe it's maybe we want to add stuff to it. But I, I like the text that you proposed, Michael, and I also think that that list from Ned is the correct list. So do you want me to say there are four ways in which the process may go, or there's there's three ways in which the process may fail. Three ways. First, the verifier may refuse to issue. Um, the attestation results due to error in processing. Okay. So the third way in is, is when the verifier is unreachable. Or a essential part that is needed for the appraisal policy is not available. Which uh, is not the same um, thing as non compliance, I think. But no. No, because the verifier can just return yeah. fail. Right, because the case you're worried about, um, Hank, is say, for example, the endorsements are not there. The verifier can't dynamically look up the endorsements. That's already covered in Michael's uh, first way, the or missing some some missing input to the verifier. Okay. So I okay, think yeah, 
the, the, the verifier is unreachable, so you can't even send your evidence to someplace successfully. So <laughs> it's not like you're going to get back an attestation result that says failure. You're not going to get back anything. You're going to get back, you know, port unreachable or something. Okay. Yeah, I, I get it. So, Michael, all I can suggest is, you know, the third way in which the process may fail. Oh, you have a typo there. The second way in which the process mail is. Um, I'm not hearing yep. anything from Michael. Yep. I don't know. If I, I, I got it. Yeah. Okay. Say that. The, the, right. And the third way is, is the, in which the process may fail is when the verifier is unreachable or unavailable, if you like the term that Ned put in. Yeah, so the third sentence I wrote was, the third way is when the verifier is unreachable. Yep, that's fine. And I'm just trying to... Okay. So that's what I wrote. Okay. Uh, showing to fix the mail typo in line 242. Yeah, I did. 242 process. Oh, I've got that. Process may fail. <laughs> okay, I'll fix it. Just take another issue to talk on. Okay. I mean, at some point, I would like to discuss 36. Uh, let's move on. Let's move on to 36. We're halfway through our time right now. Then. Okay. Especially since we have two people at TCG, I'm interested in other people's opinion on this one. Um, uh, unless somebody educates me otherwise. Um, my natural belief right now is no, but it could be part of one. Uh, my understanding is that TPM requires something else to feed it values, and so you also have to trust the thing that's feeding it the values to measure. And so that's if you have, yeah, um, you, don't, you don't have to trust the thing that is feeding it the values, weirdly. It is a passive root of trust for multiple purposes. So. I think in order to address this issue, we have to reopen the can of worms. That is, do we want to use the term root of trust here, I think. Uh, because you're right, the TPM by itself does nothing. It just sits there and consumes. It's a power sucking alien. Yeah, and, yeah. and then you can use it. But weirdly, it is used by a standard uh, interface, which is called uh, the trusted software stack, by Finally, definition is not trusted. It ha that don't have to be trusted because the TPM can only use used in a way that it, it produces trustworthy results, and and you can you can use it from an untrusted, sorry, a rich environment system, for example, and 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 that's okay. But well, I think the point is that it's a garbage in, garbage out kind of Correct. proposition. And Correct. If you feed it garbage, you'll find garbage. Garbage. Right. The verifier doesn't want to trust garbage. So there is some assumption that the, the thing that's producing the inputs to the TPM isn't garbage. Correct. That's my point. That's, that's why I think, unless you educate me otherwise, I think the answer is no, although it could be used by one or part of one. Mm -hmm. But by itself, it can't be the testing environment. And, and if, if you go down the TCG terminology path, you end up with the, the root of trust for measurement is trusted by the other two roots, which are the TPM, the root of trust for storage and reporting, and that there's something called a trusted building block, which connects the root of trust for measurement to the root of trust for storage and reporting. And it's the combination of those three roots and the TBB that is your, quote, root of trust, and you're trusting everything. <clears throat> uh, and you're also trusting the, the um, <clears throat> what they call the trust chain, which is the sequence of booted software from the root of trust for measurement to the point where you get to the thing that is talking to the TPM through the TSS. That's also trusted, even though the TCG doesn't have a name for it. Yep, um, I, agree. I agree with all that. And so then the combination of that may be your testing environment. 
Exactly. And the uh, testing environment can be collaborative in some cases. Right. Hank, you faded out right in the middle. Can you repeat? Ah, shoot. Uh, the testing environment could be collapsed with the target environment in some uh, user scenarios, yeah. And it's still valid. Am I breaking up again? Um, does uh, that make sense? Maybe not. I, 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 think, I think that it's not exactly true because, if, huh? from a TCG perspective, because if you follow that path, there's still the, hey, I trust the thing that I just, the code that's running now, I trust it to measure the next bit of code that I'm about to jump to, in which case the, attest, the, the target environment is still not the attesting environment, although transitorily it is um, because you're, you're, you know, you're moving from one, transitioning from one state to another. <clears throat> so this, the end steady state um description maybe fits your definition but it was achieved in a particular way that didn't violate the separation of targeted target environment and the testing environment i think uh so michael can you pull up section 4.1 because i was looking to see what frank filed this on and there actually is a sentence that i think i disagree with how it's worded and so i think this is a valid issue which may be may be easy to fix mm -hmm. Went to which one now? 41? Um, it's the it's in the composite attester section, and it's the sentence that starts that reads, each slot has an attesting environment such as a TPM or TEE collecting the claims of its boot process. And so the such as a TPM implies that the answer is a TPM can be an attesting environment. Right, that doesn't make and sense. So since it's already in a such as, so it's already by way of example only, it would be easy to fix by deleting TPM or because it's just an example anyway. Right. Mm -hmm. And then you don't have but, to dive into all this issue here just for purposes of this sentence because it's just showing in a single example. So. And a, t a TE is. Is also just an example, right? So. And somewhat um, uh, sort of yeah. fits, the, fits the definition of yeah. something that could include a TPM and it's uh, That's TCP. True. Yeah, so here my low-hanging fruit uh, proposal to address that issue that was filed is just delete TPM or. Uh -huh. I would agree with that. Um, still, the issue itself is talking about root of trust of something and something and something. Do we want to delve in that domain or are we dancing around that? Um, right now, my inclination is to dance around it and not talk about all the types of roots of trust unless we have to, which... So far, sure. I don't think we have to. We may in the future, but I think we had that same question in suit and teep. And so I would start from yeah. the same answer that they had for, for rats that says, well, let's not introduce that until we find it necessary. Because I don't want to be uh, biased here, but um, um, there is a benefit of using a TPM in combination with a TEE. Um, uh, yes. and, and, and the text does not show this in any case. Um, I think that's okay. I don't disagree with you, but I think it's okay for the text to not uh, okay. go into details of you know different ways to compose TEs or uh, other Good. testing environments. Yeah, I just want to make sure that we are we are doing it this way. We are favoring uh, the isolation of execution environment and not talking about the rules of trust that might reside in a TE or not. Yeah. Okay. I mean that's my preference anyway. So. All right. Your your change looks good, Michael. I think Lawrence and Giri will be on board with this decision, I assume. <laughs> Giri's on the call, so. Oh, Giri, Giri, how, how do you think about that? Muted. Hmm. Yeah, let's consider that nice to have input, okay. Okay, so should we move on to composite attester box? Sure. Uh, uh, well, that was the new turn. 
It was Zach Two now. Yeah. The one that starts figure two or whatever. Yeah, that one. Yeah. So, um, I, I saw some support for composite device on the list. Yeah, so that was from Ned, and I tried to refrain from expressing an opinion. <laughs> I actually I'm a, like composite device too. I think composite device is okay if at some point we highlight that every component, as first of all, a composite device can be a a composite with just one component, and then we uh, we we cover the atomic device or whatever you want to call it, and then uh, and then uh, have the uh, sorry, <laughs> and then we have the. Um, uh, components in that composite device, and all components are entities that can take on roles. The end. Um, I do not have a strong opinion on this one, other than I would like consistency between the sentence at the top of the diagram, which says the potential flow for A, fill in the blank. Right now it says composite tester. The thing that has the, uh, the bottom line inside the diagram, where it has the TBD33 after it, uh, the title right below the diagram, which says conceptual flow for a composite tester or whatever it is, and then the sentence after that that says in the composite tester comma. I would like all four of those to have the same term, whatever one we pick. Other than that, I don't have a strong opinion. Yeah, I think that's, that's I just wasn't going to edit it six yeah. times. Yeah, yeah so okay. it's really, I fixed it on my screen. Um, you're and, saying that you're saying that composite device inside the box where it says TBD number 33 should be the same as these other uses? Whatever term we pick, we should fix all of the uses to use the same term. That is, that's my opinion, but I don't have a, 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 I don't have a, a strong opinion as to which term that is. Right now the text says composite a tester and the diagram has you know, multiple possibilities with the TBD. All I'm saying is I would like whatever we choose for them both to be the same. <clears throat> Does that add also, anything? I see a typo here, which I'm not sure I know how to resolve. Um, uh, here, which evaluate the composite attesters. Uh, I guess it's, a, I'm trying to figure out why there's an apostrophe S, and I guess it's a trustworthiness. Correct. I don't think it's a typo. I just find it really hard to read that the 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 fact that the thing that's possessed is is uh it's fine to reword. I don't think it's incorrect right now, but it yeah, may be okay. hard to read, I agree. It could be which evaluates the composite attester's trustworthiness, including the lead attesters and other attesters trustworthiness. And you could yeah, do I think that works things. better. I'll, I'll put that extra word in there. The trustworthiness first, then you get away from possessive S. <clears throat> Okay. Uh, but back, back to evaluate the story right. that's trustworthy. How do you suggest? You put trustworthiness be first, and then. So, I think Ned, you're suggesting which, right? Which is uh, the trustworthiness of the composite attester, including the lead attester and other attesters? And and for this reason, I think the composite attester would be the right thing for the diagram above. One of the reasons we had. Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. issues is we had an issue with device boundaries versus role boundaries. And I really hope the diagram will be talking about role because a tester B and C to me can exist on another device. I'll buy that argument. So is okay. there is are you suggesting there's some tweak to the sentence up here that the word role should go into? Oh, he's saying he thinks that that one is correct and that the TBD33 should just say composite a tester and then it's all consistent. That's what yeah. I Okay, that's fine. Yeah, I, okay. I, I buy that argument. That that makes sense to me. I actually see the argument, but why do we need the outer box then? Isn't that misleading? I, I think I like the outer box. Well, I I I think that the the use of the term composite device is describing an entity, not a role. It may be that this diagram taken as one thing is describing a role um, or a use case. I'm not certain, uh, but I don't think I think I think it muddies the water to call a tester a, a composite tester, which essentially is defining a new role <clears throat> versus. Um, 
Mm. Okay. Saying, well, this is the context, this is the entity context in which there's some interesting interplay of roles, but we're not trying to define a new role. Yeah, okay. exactly. I, I buy think that the, the book so looks like entity for me. I, I don't know why. I buy Ned's argument too, so I uh, withdraw my uh, proposal that uh, the text and that line in the diagram have to have the same term. I can now see arguments for them to possibly be different if we want it to be. So I guess I don't have a strong opinion either way. Pick one. Um, I think that I, section, the section could be titled something like, you know, composite device attestation instead of composite attester. And then, then it doesn't sound like we're defining a new role, but we are describing this use case. Mm -hmm. um, so let me hit reload. Yeah, this is what I have now. I mean, really, we just have a subtype of a tester, and if we just want to show that this is what a tester can do without formally defining it, that's fine. Yeah. So in the direction that you're going, Michael, uh, it is not complete. I want to look at the first paragraph underneath the diagram, which ends in the word evidence of the whole composite tester. And did you mean composite device there? Yep. Maybe we need a section that says composite device and composite attesters to disambiguate what we mean here. One is an entity, the other one is a rule composition that can be anywhere. I think in the direction that Michael's going in his edits here, there's no term that's composite attester. We never introduced that term. Yes, we have not yet, but I started to see merit in it until now. Hmm. I, I, I'm, I'm my right now the way I'm thinking about it is we want to try and keep the roles architecture as simple as possible. Please. Mm, okay. Uh, so no subtype of a tester that is kind of uh, distributed attesting target and whatever the hierarchy of a tester is also distributed. That is something we do not delve into then. I'm right, thinking that I don't. I want to keep the number of terms. Uh, as small as possible and just deal with mm -hmm. it in text. You can have different mm -hmm. cases or something like that, but we don't have to define new terms for everything is, is my preference. So. Okay. If we're building a, um, you know, a, a data model of everything and giving, assigning tags to everything in the data model and it's, you know, whatever, you'd, you'd have to come up with tag names for everything, but I don't think we want to do that in the architecture. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So the text would say something as simple as attesters can be composed of attesters, the end. Yeah. Well, but you could give uh, an example, which is what this, di what this uh, section is doing, but yeah. Yeah, I think that, that the, the thing that is new here is the composite evidence object out of this existing environment. So now there's, it can have evidence and it can have a composite evidence are the two flows that can come out. Or, to me, it's positive evidence can be assembled by an attester from uh, from components of, or from signed information from different attesters. Let me see if I yeah. can simplify that. But basically, yeah. the issue is yeah. composite evidence has to have signed information from multiple attesters. Right. But what I'm saying it, in this diagram, it's, it's also showing that the attester A is providing evidence in addition to composite evidence. So we don't show, we only show one arrow coming out and we label that composite evidence. Um, yes. But I think but there's that's the only that are coming out of it, evidence and composite evidence. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna say that I'm lost as to what you're just talking about. There's some minutiae that I'm missing. So in the simple case of an attester, there's a target environment which collects claims that are inputted into an attesting environment that produces evidence to a verifier. That's, we, I think there's another diagram that, is, that shows that, right? Right. And now we have this more complex diagram that shows uh, attesters B and C providing evidence to the attesting environment that produces composite evidence. Yep. So either, so we could, if we just wanted to focus on one arrow coming out, we should remove target environment 
and collecting claims because it's dealt with somewhere else, I guess. <clears throat> or we add an explanation that there's another arrow coming out with the evidence that relates to the target environment's claims that were collected. Or a composite evidence can consist of evidence, or the other way around, that evidence can consist of composite evidence or some some nesting kind of structure. I don't know. Um, I don't think that this diagram needs to change, other than the only thing in this diagram now that I'm not a huge fan of, but I'm okay with it, is the word evidence on the lines from a tester B over to a testing environment. I think the term evidence there is arguable, but I don't object to it. Um, the notion is you have different claim sets, right? You have the claim set that the lead of testers claim set that's in the collecting claims line that comes in and then appears inside the components of evidence. You also have various claim sets that come from a tester B, a tester C, and dot, dot, dot. Those are also claim sets, um, but evidence we normally show is going to a verifier, and we said the testing environment inside the composite device may or may not have a verifier. So if it doesn't, then those are just claim sets that go into the composite evidence and up to the verifier. And that's why I said evidence is a little bit overstated, but I don't object to it in the evidence of a tester's uh, horizontal lines. And I would disagree with that because the attester B could have a root of trust of reporting, a well-founded well, well signature that has meaning and therefore composes evidence by itself. We are not just sending it to a verifier. That is it, a problem with the idea to just sending it there, I assume. Um, so, so, I, this so is the about part, the definition of the term evidence. You can have signed <laughs> claims regardless yeah, yeah. of whether they appear and the thing that appears to the, goes to the verifier. So, so the... the Dave said that the testing environment could consist of a verifier. The text I think that section already has it, may or may not have one. I mm. did. So I disagree. So I don't like that we're in using words to describe something that's not in the diagram that's really important. In other words, uh, if there's a verifier. Have, then we would have 50 different diagrams in this document. It would be hard to read. <laughs> yeah. But if, there, if, there, the if, if there's a subcase, which is that there's a a local verifier that's talking to a remote verifier or something like this, that's also not something that's, that, that the roles architecture anticipates. <clears throat> Otherwise, we would call that verif the verifier that's outside, that's at the top of the page, the relying party, uh, not a verifier. So I, I, I have a question that, that I'm, I'm confused on because um, if there is a verifier in the in the attesting environment, then uh, it is potentially uh, dropping or doing other things to the composite evidence elements that have been provided by attesters B and C and contorting it. And right. it, it may not be trustworthy. <clears throat> and we've already talked about whether the verifier is trustworthy based on a policy. And I don't see how we can have a policy that's applying to an attesting environment that's that's not that can drop data that gets into the the verifier. Right, exactly. It's it becomes a verifier which has these other inputs as described in the roles architecture, which complicates things significantly. Since I, none of these I, inputs are shown. It implies that it isn't a verifier. Well, it can be. I mean, you can have the attester B have it signed and then pass the attesting environment go up to the verifier. And the verifier can verify the signature of a tester B. It's just a, almost a tandem function, but that's, it's still. That's, that's called background check. Well, you're doing both background check and passport here because you're. Uh, right, but the, it doesn't have to be. The point is, is that the attester B evidence is being relayed by uh, the composite device, and the testing environment is not adding any value. It's just forwarding a message. But the diagram is misrepresenting adding some kind of value. Hmm. And the testing environment can is, is is by definition i think always a root of trust of reporting mm. no i don't think we're getting anywhere no. we seem to be going around in, in, in circles and and I, I actually have um 
like there's just really subtle words that you guys are using that either is just missing from this diagram or you're you're taking issue with pieces of the diagram that the diagram is not even purporting to try to represent. Mm -hmm. Maybe. So uh, um, the, uh, the point of this, because you're going into things about, about basically this is really only about what was just last said is that that the lead tester is passing things on it may be doing it may be acting as a verifier if it has this where it may be talking to a different verifier to get attestation results from a test for a tester B which is passing on as evidence but that none of those details matter because they're all bought, contained in that in testing environment box Mm. Right, and we're trying to abstract all that so that we just say, look, we have something with multiple components here. Um, multiple roles. The I thing, the thing that's different is we labeled this composite evidence. So what is what does that look like? Well, so I had the question a while ago was whether this was um, evidence from A plus attestation results from B, C, and D, et cetera, or whether or not the evidence format was, would accommodate the fact that the, the uh, attestation results, in fact, you know, were represented as easily the same way, in which case, that's, I don't think it matters, right? It's if an array of results yeah, so defined if by some, different things. If there's some, some sort of con construction that, that causes <clears throat> there to be attestation results coming out of the, the composite device, then we would call it attestation results, not composite evidence. No, that's not true. Because the label goes on what the destination is. If the destination is a verifier, it's by definition evidence. <clears throat> well, if the, if the destination is a relying party, then it's by definition attestation results, even if the content is identical. Right, so if the, it's, you could flip it the other way and say, well, if it's attestation results, then it should, we should call it a relying party, not a verifier. Correct. Which is why when I say anything that goes inside that line is by terminology definition, not an attestation result. It may be an EAT that was generated as if it was a attestation result, but when you send it to a verifier, it's called evidence, even if the format is identical. And Dave, could you take on the action item to put that into a very concise sentence early on? Because I think that is a vital thing that would eliminate a lot of discussion. Um, if people want me to, yes, I'm not sure where to put it. And I still think we're getting a little wrapped around the axle as to what, do, what to do with this particular section. Right. So okay. I don't know if there's an issue. I don't know if it's because we're trying to show both simple and complex cases in the same diagram and we're saying, oh, but now that we've simplified the diagram, it doesn't show all the complexity. <laughs> yes. But I think that's the, I think that should be the goal is to is to show the simple case, <clears throat> and think things can be you know, people can make things more complicated if they need to. But we want to be able to show the simple case first and and explain, you know this concept of composite device or, you know. Uh, yeah, I'm all for the, the, the whole idea of composing something that is relevant to the section. And one outcome of that is something called com composite evidence. And so let's define what we mean by composite evidence in the composition use case example. And so we, we want to describe what's going on in the attesting environment that's receiving these inputs and producing this output, which is a new thing, <clears throat> what's really happening there? And I, I think the simple case is that it's, it's assembling evidence into a structure and maybe it's signing it or creating a, some other um, claim that, that it performs some uh, you know, assembly, but not much more than that. Yeah. You know. I sent a description for composite evidence in uh, a couple weeks ago. Maybe it got lost, but uh, I can resend it in. I think it does this. My big thing on the other diagram is just the only thing I'm worried about is that we don't assume that composite evidence can only come from a composite device. 
So that's my only thing that we don't have a diagram that limits composite evidence just from a composite device. And and by you mean like some claims that may come from other devices yeah. and, and, and appear inside there, right? That's the case you're talking about. Yeah. If we okay. use the term yep. composite system instead of composite device, that would be better. The no, system, yeah, but just making sure it doesn't get disqualified. That's all. It, the system is another term. It's correct, but I would. Uh, yeah, I don't like that as much. I, I think it's just it's, you could say sure entity, right? And then it's uh, big bus. Uh, I think we should stick with the same terms and just make sure it's not disqualified, as Eric is saying. Okay. So composite device is overly specific as an entity definition, but using the term composite entity is too abstract for people's. Yeah. Well, yeah, I agree with you. I, composite I device is a compromise here. Okay. Um, it doesn't cover all, but it shows vital items. And we elaborate on this, we can show with the example. Yeah, you can just say composite, and, and the text in this section might just imply that composite device is being used as an example. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to use, for example, a composite device that's a multi chassis router or something like that. Mm hmm. And you're not that would detain, composite uh, device as any formal term or anything like that. You're just using it to say, you have a composite device, which is a multi chassis router. Let's depict how that might look, for example. Mm -hmm. works, for, works for me. Yeah. Okay, so in the last, next uh, five minutes or three minutes that we have left, uh, I just want to walk through these other IDs. Eric, if you can send me your GitHub or send Hank your GitHub ID so I can assign you that issue. Um, Frank opened a whole bunch of these, I guess, on Wednesday after our call. Um, tried to get the text here. This one's closed, I think. Those issues uh, there. What about this? Close this there. Is that already done? Dave, well, the, the, clo the closed one is, a, is one from Dave. Dave basically identified the same thing as Frank. Yeah, okay. But, but Frank's is still an issue. Oh. Right. Okay. So let's just close okay. the duplicate. Okay. Right. So we need to fix that. Okay. Uh, we've solved this problem. Closed. Next. We had a new term, composite tester. We've decided not to do it, use this term. That's right. That's right, but we have maybe maybe put into the comments uh, that we uh, will, will uh, elaborate this in the text how multiple attestors can be composed, but we will not define the term. You used to add a reference to the other issue, the one that was had you know the figure two, uh, yeah, the thirty three. Oh, yeah, so uh, uh, I think we did this. I don't remember. I think we did this. That's still in there. I think we already did it. I think you're right. I think that one can be closed. This section can. Yeah, that's closed. I just didn't reference this issue in the pull request. Yeah. Okay, so um, next week is the Suit Rats Teep Hackathon. Um, I believe that we have uh, something organized during that period of time as well. How many are coming to that event? I plan to be there. You'll be physically there, okay. Me too. Okay. Um, so the question is, do we want to, this works out to be 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. on a Tuesday in this time zone. Do we want to keep that time and, and chat in person and get whoever's not there? Hank's coming, I know. Do um, um, you want to do that or, or, I have or to, what? I have to check because I thought that there was a uh, suit virtual interim scheduled for the fourth Wednesday. on one of the days. 
It says it's Wednesday at 4 p.m. Gotcha. Okay, thanks. Um, So we want to keep this time for next week. Mm -hmm. That's for me. Yeah, okay. Works for me as well. Um, All right, I'll put that in the calendar. I deleted it. And so this is saying, who, who in this uh, call is attending uh, next to Michael and me uh, the uh, workshop, uh, the hackathon? I heard Dave and I heard Ned. Oh, okay. Not Ned. That was somebody else. It's Thomas. Thomas. Okay, yeah. So, so thanks. Um, sorry. So uh, we had uh, Dave and Thomas, Hank, and Michael. That's the list. They'll be in person. Okay. Yep. All right. Wonderful. Okay. So talk to you guys and see you guys next week then. Okay. Great. Okay. Thanks. Cheers. Bye.